Good morning, students. So for today's class, we'll quickly begin up with a new chapter called as your living world. Okay. In the particular chapter, living world, the first thing what we are learning for today's day is children. For an organism to be living, there are some features that are very much important. Now, if I have take some object and say, yes, Vara, this is living. Okay. So when I say it is living, it should have certain uh, entities or the characteristics which has to be present. Now, what are those entities and the characteristics? Darwin, first of all, it has to show your growth, okay? So the cells has to keep on growing. The second one is children, it has to show the reproduction, okay? Any living organism should show the reproduction. But let me make the point, it is not a main point. There are particular living organisms which do not even reproduce also. But still, it plays an important role. Now, it has a particular tactile sensations, mean to say your response to the stimulus, okay? And ability to sense the environment, mean to say whatever is happening in the environment, whether if it is a cold or the hot temperature, the particular organism has to particularly respond to the environment. Moving on to the next one is children, it's your metabolism. Entire body has to be in a metabolic activity, okay? You have to respire. The hormone has to be in a proper condition. So everything plays an important role. Self-organized, of course, are all the organ systems are self-organized. And mortality, when I say mortality, the death of the cells, okay? So not only the death of the cells, even the organisms too, okay? Now, since all the process occur in the protoplasm, the and rightly call it as your physical basis of life. Mean to say, so many particular activities will be influencing your protoplasm. Now imagine the cell is growing. Definitely your protoplasm is growing. Something metabolic activity. It will usually take place in the protoplasm. So most of the process occurs in the protoplasm. Hence he says, who the rightly says that physical basis of the life. Which one? Your protoplasm. Okay. It exhibits all the properties of life and hence it is also known as a living matter. Which ones we have? The protoplasm okay model of the story a particular organism or a cell should contain your protoplasm and uh, whenever i say the particular object is living okay so these are the living characteristic of the particular uh, organism if at all i have to call this particular organism as living it should contain all these particular processes okay now okay going on to the next particular thing yeah, when I use this particular biodiversity, it refers to what? It refers to the total number of the number of the particular organisms, okay, found on the earth. Of course, we would have already studied in the chapter biodiversity too. Yes, or no, children. Now, term is used as a part of a classification. Now, coming back to the point, children, the nomenclature. Now, the process of rendering a scientific name to the organisms, okay. I am sure you know that Carlos Linnaeus played a very important role into this, which we'll be learning in the next point. Okay, so usually your ICBN and ICZN, am I clear to you? So these two particular uh, entities, am I clear to you children, were advanced to appoint the scientific names for the plants and animals separately. So ICBN and ICZN played a very important role in the particular uh, Naming of the plants and ICMEN. Botanical nomenclature played an important role in plants. Zoological nomenclature played an important role in the animals. Am I clear to you? Now going ahead children, what is it? The name would have two segments. Which are those? One is your generic, another one is your specific epithet. Okay. So generic epithet and a species epithet or specific epithet. This arrangement was providing with two particular components. This particular component is called as your binomial nomenclature yen ekna binomial nomenclature anta karithivi because darling it has a particular generic name and it also has a specific name okay so since it is tagged with two particular components we called it as your binomial nomenclature okay now who was the person who actually coined it it was none other than your carlos linnaeus yaru makle maadid actually idana carlos linnaeus was a person who actually worked on this particular binomial nomenclature, okay? Now, example is Homo sapiens, Manisha. Now, Homo is nothing but a generic name. Sapiens is nothing but a specific name. Am I clear to children? So, this was the way where your binomial nomenclature played an important role. Now, rules of the nomenclature. Mm, I'll go to the next slide where I've given in points, okay? Now, Starting with the two points, oh, sorry, the first point. 
biological nomenclatures okay the biological names are generally are used in a latin what is it children they are usually usually used in a latin okay and the other name hesra now latin al barabra bariwara we use it italic score font mummy en antidira when we spell it out okay for example homo sapien homo sapien is actually your latin name artha kriya makle bariwara you know the font what we use now example the font whatever you are seeing on the screen maybe it is your arial okay at the times roman arithi artha kriya so adhe rithi na bariya the arithi bartivi italics il bartivi okay na so they are usually a latinized and derived from the latin in respective of their origin so we usually stick on to your latin names now the first word in a biological name represents the genus and the second name will always represent your particular specific am i clear to you so species epithet and the genus epithet here are two you will write oh these are the roots the first name should be always the genus representing second name should always be your species representing now both the words in the biological name when hand written are separately hand written bardaga we need to underline it what we have to do children we have to underline it okay so whenever it is printed we will always go to your italics am i clear to you so hand written bari bari you have to underline if at all we go to a printed we have to mention it in an italics now the first name denoting the genus starts with a capital letter this is very important now homo sapiens so h will start from a capital letter whereas sapiens will start from a small letter am i clear to you so homo is the capital letter representing the genus sapiens representing your particular species am i clear to you so it can be illustrated with an example mangifera indica am i clear to you so m is in your particular capital i is in your small letter which is a species epithet so these are the certain rules of your particular uh, binomial nomenclature whenever you are writing we are here uh, certain terminologies which you have to know classification or when i use the term classification it's a process of assigning the creatures in a specific classes or the groups so you have to assign them in a particular classes or the groups am i clear to you so that is called as your classification okay children now uh, considering some defined characters they are known as your taxa and i have an example if at all you take a particular uh, monkeys okay let's not take monkeys let's take all together mammals am i clear to you all the mammals have some common features we put it in a common taxa what is that animalia am i clear to you the same way even over here that is what they are telling you going ahead to the next particular uh, terminology you know taxonomy now darling when i use the term taxonomy it is a process of identification nomenclature and organization of a life forms considering what inner and the outer cell of the structure biological data and advancement process now in your taxonomy and tamata they call them okay it is not that easy you can classify anything with any of the particular uh, taxonomic things okay what is very important makla idralla ni ven madbeku andre first of all you have to know uh, what is the structure of a cell whatever are proteins nodbeku hormones nodbeku what are the contents whatever is there so keeping all these things in the point you classify an organism now and i use a systematics it is an investigation of life forms association to identification nomenclature arrangement evolutionary correspondence these are called as your systematics en martira investigate martira life forms na yav yav rithiyalli first of all you will see what is the identification you will see what all i can see morphologically and particular inner tissues nomenclature you will go ahead you have to see evolution mean to say now we know the apes or the early man were also somewhere you know related to us am i clear to so the evolution also plays a very important role now taxonomic categories it is depicts the rank or the level in a hierarchical arrangement in ascending order now the what are those particular things is children see over here kingdom division class order family genus and species now starting up with the first one is your kingdom okay now kingdom includes a phyla of animals or the plants am i clear to children animals or the particular plants so that is what your particular kingdom represents now your divisions are usually called as your particularly phylum also am i clear to what is it are called as children it is also called as your phylum also phylum plus division am i clear to you so 
Division, the term we usually use it in the plants. Keep this in your mind. Division, we use it in the plants. Phylum, we use it in the animals. Yeah, can have division of plant phylum and the category. Division, we use it in the particular plants. We signify the plants. Uh, phylum, we use it for the animals. Okay. Now, classes, many orders related to each other are incorporated into classes. And then, you know, group of particular orders will form your class. Am I clear to you? Group of related family will form your order. Group of related genus will form your family. Group of particular species, related species having the similar characteristics will form your genus. Am I clear to you? Whereas when it comes to species, it is an essential unit of a classification. It is a unit of a classification refers to the individual form in any group that are formally related. Okay, obtained from a typical ancestors. And there are examples, species, bantu, and that, almost like monkeys, monkeys, or RET species, tiger, or lion, so, okay, now, okay. So, we, they represent almost the similar characteristics. Am I clear to okay? you? So, species plays an important role, like human and human, all are same species. Am I clear to okay? you? So, that is what the uh, species state is nothing but your unit of your classification. So, uh, once again, Kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus, and species. Division is used in the plants. Phylum is used in your particular animals. Now, here are some of the particular uh, examples which is given. For man, okay, what is the biological name? Homo sapiens. Genus is Homo. Family is Hominidae. Order is Primata. Class is Mammalia. Phylum or the division. Now, what is it over here? It's usually a phylum. Okay, it's chordata. Now, coming back to the particular house fly, the scientific name is Musa, Musa, Musa domestica. Okay, so the genus is Musa, family is Musidae, order is Diptera, class is Insecta, phylum is Arthropoda. Now, coming to Mango, Mangifera indica, Mangifera is a genus. Now, family is coming to your particular family called as Ana Anacaridaceae. Okay, so order is your sapindians, class is your dicotyledonae, phylum is your particularly the angiosperm. Okay, uh, sorry, it's a division since it is a plant. Now, wheat, it is usually your, uh, what to say, biological name is Triticum aestivum. Of course, the genus is Triticum, family Poaceae, order Poes, monocotyledonae, the class, and again, the division is nothing but your angiosperm. Okay, so then, so these are the some of the examples which you have already by heart in your first few, if at all you remember. So please do remember these things, okay? Now, coming to your, the next particular point is children, the taxonomical aids. Now, children, what are these taxonomical aids? Taxonomic guide or taxonomic aids refers to the particular techniques stored the information and procedure useful in the identification and the classification. We require this taxonomical aids. Why do we require it children? In order to store the information. Am I clear to you? In information before, in order to identify and classify the followings. So we require a particular taxonomical aids. Okay. Now under that, the first one. Herbarium. Herbarium. It is a storehouse of a collected plant specimens. Okay. It is a storehouse of a collected plant specimens that are usually dried pressed and preserved on the sheets. So, here yeah, matter, usually in Gyaadhyay plants, usually herbarium mostly, okay, most of the times we do it for the particular plants. Uh, what we do in this particular thing is you collect a plant, uh, dry the plants, okay, people tree leaf in that, okay, now you take that leaf, put it under your books and keep it and dry it, correct? The same technique is used even in your herbarium. But of course, so that there will be no insects acting upon it. Okay. Now, a herbaria is a store home or the store room of an assembled plant samples. These samples are usually dried, squeezed and protected under the particular sheets after which they are systematically ordered according to the classification system. Okay. So, usually in matter, dry madi, clean agadana, Whatever the water is there will be dried out and then they will put it on a sheet, big sheet to be almost this size. Okay, so where here entire information will be there. Mean to say the scientific name, genus, family, order, everything will be there. And also the date, 
okay on what date you're doing what is the place you have collected okay what is the place which place you collected altitude every single important points will be there in the herbarium okay so herbarium sheets consists of a marks concerning the scientific name that's what i'm telling you date spot gathering name of the particular collector so collector name is also important family and much more concerning to the particular samples okay every particular data will be there in your herbarium yeah the famous particular herbarium present the first one is your royal botanical garden which is there in q london almost the herbarium whatever you have over there okay see the heading is also important herbarium of the world okay so it is usually 6.5 million herbarias are present okay so museum of natural history which is in paris you have 5 million okay uh Konara botanical society of academic which is there in russia is almost 5 million british museum which is almost 4 million okay royal botanical garden this is in your edinburgh scotland okay so it is 2.5 million okay so where does we people come okay it is from here where is it center national herbarium support which is in kolkata we have 2.5 national botanical garden lucknow we have almost 1 million and Forest Research Institute, Dehradun, we have almost 0.3 million. So remember, our Indians also very much important. But remember, the first one which ranks is usually your Royal Botanical Garden Q, the most uh, seen herb areas present. See, this is how your herb area looks. This is your sheet. Okay. So in the sheet, see here, you have all the informations usually present over here. Okay. And... Uh, this is, this is, see children, one thing you should remember, here the leaves are overlapping. It shouldn't overlap. Full spread down in my actually. It shouldn't overlap like this. It should be cleanly spread. See, like this. It should be cleanly spread. Am I clear to you children? It should be cleanly spread. It shouldn't overlap. Not in Allah, overlap. So it is not that good herbaria. So purposefully I took this particular pick for you. It shouldn't overlap like this. It should be like this, neatly exposed. Am I clear to you? Surface area should be cleanly, you know, uh, seen through. So this is how your herb area looks like. Going on to the next one, Makla, it is your museums. In you know, museums. Now coming to your museums, biological museums are generally set up in educational institutions such as schools and colleges. Okay, so schools and colleges, you usually have a particular museums generally present. Okay, so museums have a collection of preserved plant and animal specimens. You would have seen in all the museums, you would have had plants present. And in laboratory, specimens like this, or in some other particular frog, fish, everything. Okay, so that's the museums wherever you there. Specimens are usually preserved in the containers or jaws. Which are preserved preservative solutions on children. Um, if at all you guys want to become a guy, you know, like uh, future doctors or something, the best thing which I liked about in this is Manipal, uh, particular university where uh, you have this Mangalore, okay, Manipal, where nicely they have preserved each and every organ, okay. So if, I'm sure that you, if some would have already visited, there, but it was a good place for seeing, you know, some of the uh, what to say, how the twins are there. How the organs are there so everything is almost preserved okay children so you can go have a look over there also and many other museums definitely you will have okay now plant and animal specimens may also be preserved as a dry specimens like a skeleton and so on okay insects are preserved in an insect box after collecting killing and thinning now main of thinning on that first see that this is the particular organism by insect or something okay you pin them you bowl them like this so that it will be cleanly spread. Larger animals like the birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved. All right, stuffings are done. You know, dear both of you, we don't school or a la. Stuffings are done. Am I clear? You know, like rabbit, pigeons, they usually dry them nicely and they stuff them. Museums often have a collection of your skeletons and animals too. Okay, I'm sure I have skeletons, so you'll be seeing everywhere. Am I clear to you? So all these are your particular parts of your museums. Okay, children, preserved specimens are there. Stuffed animals will be there. Dried collections of animals and plants will be there. So all these things will come under your museums. Moving ahead. See children, this is how usually your museum looks like. Okay. 
so i think uh, you would have seen a better ones also but still i felt like showing you some of the fossils and the animals which ever have been preserved okay see these are all stuffings you know what they are la idella stuffings in there am i clear to you sponges museum ide kandro tamil nadu alle la i don't remember exactly what was it cf something it will start like that okay uh, but you have lots of nice nice museums all over Going on to the next one is zoological park. They are the places where wild animals are kept in the protected environment under the human care. This is very important, which enables to learn their food habits and the behavior. Okay, here again, here Madhav did actually. How do they roar? Okay, how do they communicate? What is the behavior according to the environment? Everything you can learn in the zoological parks. Okay, all animals in zoo are provided as far as possible. the condition similar to their natural habitat this is very important you cannot get the polar bear and keep it in the particular dry place you have to keep it in a cold place so you have to make sure the natural habitat is represented over there am i clear to you so these are usually a zoological park i'm sure you have gone to the zoo mysore zoo also you have gone to okay so over there now um, um, of course you have seen many of the particular animals over there many new animals which are kept of course even there are many animals which have been extinct also okay so those are all your zoological parks i just thought i'll just show you some pictures like this so like that okay makla going on to the next one is your botanical garden in hey, makla botanical garden now coming to your botanical garden so that when we say about a botanical garden it is the accumulation okay it is a accumulation of a living plant in makla it is a accumulation of your living plant species developed to identify and also an information source every plant has a mark exhibiting its scientific name and family name makla i'm sure you have gone to ooty also correct and do ooty alla nimge botanical garden ide alle yake nam bengaluru alu ide okay if you go to kabam park lal bag and everywhere you have botanical gardens it's not that but of course in some of the places it is even more nice am i clear to you so a famous botanical gardens are at kew england indian botanical garden at howrah okay indian botanical garden at howrah and national botanical research institute which is there in your lucknow okay so these are the famous botanical gardens which are usually present yeah there the makla uh, q which is there in your england indian botanical garden howrah and national botanical research institute which is there in your lucknow so these are all your particular famous botanical gardens i just bought one picture children don't ask me which is this i just got it with a particular greenhouse okay Galal Bagal the greenhouse there. Now moving back to the next one. Key. Okay, when it speaks about the key, used for identifying both plants and animals in light of similarities and dissimilarities. Okay, I'll tell you what is it. Don't get confused. Okay, now I'll just move. I'll just read through, and again I'll come back so that you can understand it better. A key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of what. plants and animals based on their particular similarities and dissimilarities that is what we told okay now the keys are based on the particular contrasting characters generally in a pair called as couplet okay so you have two lines like this i mean to say two statements statement 1 and statement 2 okay now these two will be contrasting mean to say if i am good i am bad first statement good and the second statement bad and i am just taking you example like that so these two statements are called as your couplet now each represents the choice made between two opposite options this result in acceptance of only one rejection of the other each statement in the key is called as a couplet okay uh, sorry lead these two statement are called as a couplet each statement is called as a lead yeah that helps me makla each statement is called as a lead together we call it as your couplet understood i'll just give you example i'll come back to this point just see over here you are ready needle leaves non needle leaves so aren't they opposite to each other so these two are called as your couplets arthak ti den ro whereas this only one statement is called as your lead understood so again anta helide needle leaves okay nan yoga yoga na ki yoga d tagodi take a diagram d okay 
So, is it needle or non-needle? It is needle, correct? So, you will choose between these two. Yes, it is a needle leaves. What is it telling? Go to two. So, you will go to roll number two. So, needles are in clusters, needles are in singles. How are they? They are usually in a clusters, correct? So, I choose uh, of statement A. So, what is the answer? The answer is fine. Antarctic, yeah. So, this is how your particularly key will be there. Understood, Makra? You have to choose. So, they will say go to 2. So, go to the statement 2. If you go to statement 2, they will say are they in the clusters or are they in a single? So, when we say it is a single, uh, it's a wrong answer because I am seeing it is in a group. Correct? So, it is a point. So, that's how you usually see this particular key. So, that is what it is. So, key is usually based between similarities and the dissimilarities. So, generally they are in a pair called as couplet. And then two statements and they are usually opposites. Now, each statement is called as what? Gate. Arthai ten draw. Okay. Now, moving back to the next particular thing. You have to know the three things. That is, what is the children? Flora, manuals and monographs. Flora, they usually contain the actual account of habitat and the distribution of the plants in a given area. So, one area the area the less two plants there, the area the less two plants there. How many plants are there? Will be completely called as your flora. Okay. They provide the plant species found in that particular area. Now, when I use a manuals providing the information, okay, for the particular identification names of the species found in an area. Manuals are there. If you go for your particular this one. Uh, hotels or something like that they will give you the particular manuscript so there you will choose the thing so the same way even here the manu uh, manuals will be there monographs they contain the information of one taxon only information monographs okay so flora manuals and monographs this is your flora term okay this is the complete picture of your flora now a uh, few of the things which I would like to say you. Father of Indian taxonomy. Indian taxonomy. Father of taxonomy. Allah. Father of Indian taxonomy is your particular father. Santa Pau. Okay. Now, father of Indian botany and Indian herbaria is not required. Okay. You just know it. The term taxonomy. Okay. Was turned by D. Candoli, a French botanist. And the book what he wrote is Theory Elementary de la Botanique. Okay, so father of taxonomy is your Carlos Linnaeus. Indian taxonomy is your head Sandapau. Okay, so again a dynamic and immutable concept was brought about by a lemma. Biological concept species is also not that important. But important ones are 1, 2 and 3. So keep this in your mind. And the taxonomy who coined it. Am I clear to you children? Next stuff. Lemma. The book what he wrote is Philosophic Zoologic. Alexander O'Parent, The Origin of Life. I'm sure it has seen in evolution. Ernest Mayer, Principle of Systematic Zoology. Now Linnaeus, he has written many books. System, System and Nature, Philosophical Botanica, Species Plantarum, Genera Plantarum. So all these are the books which is written by the following authors or the scientists. 